Hey, what's up guys? Jake with Legacy 4x4, here again. I'm back. I had to take a little bit of a break. Uh, the Army sent me somewhere for a couple months without really uh, giving me any warning. So I got kind of put behind on this project. So today what we're going to do is we're going to go over how I did the electronics, the control board, wiring up the plasma table, and all those kind of things. Um, I went through a few different design changes as I was building this. I started with using a little Harbor Freight toolbox and then eventually I changed my mind and decided that I want to just make what you see here, which is this whole control table station. Um, so I'll walk you through the process and then we'll show you guys this final product and how it all turned out. I'm pretty excited about it. Alright, so the first thing that I had to do is I had to make the control board. Or, well, I figured that would be the first place to start. Um, I'm using a Hobby CNC control board kit that they sell. It comes with the board, with all of the necessary components, but they're not soldered together. What's cool about it is it has both the server motor drivers and the controller all kind of tied into one little piece. So I'm going to try it on this. Um, I don't think it's completely meant to run this big of a plasma table, so I'm going to give it a shot on this. In the event that this doesn't work out, then I'll upgrade to the different types. So you can of see here that I'm putting together the board. It goes very pretty simply. The instructions are very well written, very well thought out. And if you can solder and you know how to, or you soldered on a control board before, it's very manual to do. So I just plugged away, knocked it out. It is too easy. It took me about an hour, hour and a half or so to finish soldering the entire control board together. All right. So the next step was I needed a place to house this control board. Um, I decided initially that I was going to just use. I got a little cheap Harbor Freight toolbox for like eight or nine bucks at the store. I did end up scrapping that. Um, I decided that I wanted a more all-in-one solution. I wanted to have some availability for like um, expansion in the event that I do have to go to a bigger board or control system of some kind. And I needed something that has like the power source, um, my extra consumables, my computer wires, things like that. So building the control table is all pretty straightforward. Like I said, I used one by one by 14 gauge steel square tubing for the whole framework of it. That went by fast, it took just a couple of hours to do. And then I got to the point where I was ready to start doing the skins. All of the skin work on the side, you're making it all perfect, drilling out the holes so I have places to run my wires through, things of that nature. You know, that takes a little bit of time. Uh, that is actually the reason why I'm building this plasma table, is to make producing small sheet metal parts like this easier, so that I can do body panels, so I can do um, projects like this, all sorts of stuff. Um, that's actually what this table is for. Uh, it's just fun to have to do it all by hand one more time before the table's all done. But hey, whatever, it got done. It took a long time. I spent about a day and a half, so maybe about eight hours, eight to ten hours, building this table all together. A lot of time set in, and that's just in the mechanical build of the table. Um, it took some time. As you can see, I did my caster plates again, the same way like I did on the big plasma table, and I'm running the same four four-inch casters that the table is running. This gives it a nice unified look at the two tools in the garage, and also I like having it because now I can put my broom up underneath it and sweep underneath the table without having to move it or pick it up or anything. We finished up the frame build with a nice coat of paint. I just did a flat black from Krylon, nothing fancy. I did tie in a little bit of this satin pimento red. It's a flat red, also from Krylon. I just wanted to give it some additional uh, colors just to make it pop. And then the black and red kind of does go with the garage and it matches the theme on the plasma table itself. Too easy though, it was just a little bit of spray paint, dry 20 minutes later and it was back in the garage. So wiring. Inside the control station, or control table here, there's the board with some quick connect plugs I got on Amazon for like 10 bucks. Um, they're five wire plugs, the colors match what I'm using for my wiring on the actual table, so it was too easy to do. I put those in, those are all set up inside here, so that now when I do my X and Y and X, Y, and Z axis off the table, they'll just plug right in and then I can move it around if I have to. I can disconnect it and just move it around. Um, that was too easy. Wiring up the power source took a little bit of a uh, little voltmeter action, trying to make sure I had everything done right. I would do part of it, plug in and make sure it's still doing the right or working the right way, and continue to go through that. The power source goes, so I just use an extra um, computer monitor cord. I cut the ends off of it, strip the ends off of it, and that's why I used to plug it in the power source. The power source then pushes power straight to the start-stop switch um, back behind here, and then the start-stop switch then pushes to the All right, wiring up the table itself actually took a little bit of time. Not because it's hard by any means, it's five wires per motor. Um, 
it's easy enough. As you can see, I used the heat shrink, I soldered everything together all nice and neat, closed it all up, it's easy to do. It's just routing it through the little, those little black tracks and things like that, it just takes a lot of time. Uh, but I got it done, I was being very, I was purposely being very OCD about how I did it. I wanted the cables to be managed well, I put zip ties every few feet on the cables, you know, whatever I could do to help keep everything nice and tight and all put together. But it worked, it went pretty easily, again it took about a day to do that, um, to do all of that wiring between both the control station and also the table. So not too, too much work. But So the x-axis wiring really actually runs through this part of the gantry and it runs to the other side where it ties into this cable and then I kept that together using just a piece of plastic sheathing and then it runs through the next set of track. Everything else is just loose inside the tracks and it runs through there, they connect to each other and so it allows it to kind of freely, as you can see like that on that far side, allows it to all freely move as much as it needs to um, and keeps all the wires in control. Those tracks are not too, too expensive. There's a few bucks on Amazon. Um, straightforward enough. This is how the ends of all the wires are for each of the different axes. So this is the x-axis actually. And you can see that that's how that looks. So we'll just poke right through the side of the control table and plug right into the control board as is. All right. So this is my control station in all of its finished glory. This door is pretty straightforward. I just used a cabinet knob that I had laying around from a cabinet project, a couple of uh, cheap little hinges from Lowe's, and then some cheap magnetic strips that just work like that. So there's nothing fancy in there. It doesn't need to hold it secure, like super secure, but it works well enough that it keeps it in place. You can see my bad cutting job up here using just an angle grinder. Don't judge me too hard. There's my control board in the back. The DC fan that runs through the side to give it some airflow. That silver bit is the power source. And then there's some expanded metal on the back to uh, accommodate for some good airflow and so that I can see things in here when I do services on it. A little Tupperware container that's got some extra consumables and fuses for the plasma cutter. And that's about it in there. You can see also that there is a hole to run wiring through and that cut out for the fan. And then there's also holes in the back that run the wires through the back that get to the computer. Big start stop switch, this is just a cheap generic one on Amazon. It works though, you know, click it to start. Big red stop button if you need to turn it off. Hard to miss. On this side, this is my air filter and mist separator and regulator that I'm gonna use to run the, the table or run the plasma cutter. So all my other tools I don't run, I just run a small little um, air filter. But this one I wanted to make sure the air was super dry and was a little bit cleaner. And so this is going to be specifically just for the plasma cutter. So that's there. I still need to run the wiring or the plumbing for it, but we'll get to that. You can see the cutout for the fan and the cutout for um, wires to run through to connect to the board. Fan's got enough room that it can pull fresh air in and blow air out through the expanded metal on the back. So you can see the back of the machine here. Um, this is the air filter that came with the plasma cutter. I'm obviously just going to use that as it is. I'll just plug a quick connect into that side to run to the bigger air filter along the side. A little piece of clear hose that runs down to the air inlet at the bottom. And then there's this CNC port that I still have yet to wire right here. And then there's the power switch. 240 volt plug came all pre-wired, standard 650R plug. And then you can see that I tucked in and tied up all these wires all nice and clean. Um, just to keep it all out of the way. And you can see I run just one surge protector here. This runs all of the computer components and the control board components. Um, everything gets plugged into this and then it's all protected on that circuit. Most of my wiring for the computer runs through these holes. It's all nice and clean. Nothing on this panel at all. And then there you can see the computer. So it's nice and straightforward. And then down here, as you can see, I've got full access to the plasma cutter, if I can, there we go. I've got full access to the plasma cutter to control the different voltage and all the different knobs and it's nice and easy. And I'll be able to control that while I'm working on the computer so that it's like all in the same place. I don't have to walk around the garage and then there's obviously just a computer panel. So pretty straightforward. All right, so what's left to be done? We're at kind of the finishing stages of wiring up the electrical stuff over the table. So like I said, the table is complete, all of its wiring is done and it's all ended with quick connect fittings. And this has all the quick connect fittings in as well. So all I gotta do is roll them next to each other, plug them in, and then they'll be connected. I'm waiting to do that until I flash this computer. So this computer currently has Windows 10 on it. 
I'm going to use Linux CNC because it's a free software and it, I was watching some videos on it, it seems pretty well updated, it seems to have all the features that I need, so I'm going to use that. In order to use Linux CNC though, I need to flash this computer with a Linux OS and then download Linux CNC. So I'm going to do all that before I start plugging things into each other. I've tested all the components in here though, and on the control station side, everything is working as it should. I have no way to test the table side until I plug it in. After that, I've just got some fine tuning of some things with the table. I've got to tighten down um, some of the guides and make sure that they're as tight as I can get them so that the table will have the highest um, tolerances while it starts to actually cut. So just some fine tuning kind of stuff. Um, and then once we get Linux C installed, we'll have to go, obviously go through and set the system up with the table, start to run some test runs and things of that nature. All right, so there we have it, guys. That's what I did over the last couple of days. As I, like I said, I was gone, but I got back and I got right back into it as always. All right, guys, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. We enjoy making these videos, and I know we're trying to rebuild right now, kind of with the channel and everything. But make sure you stick around. We got lots more fun stuff coming. There's a little teaser of the Jeep. You can see what's coming up next on that on that front end when I'm done here with the, the plasma table. Alright, stick around guys. Thanks for watching.